directions. If you take photos from this side, from the side, you have the, the sun from here. If you look to there. Here must you see, have you a right angel, angel and the sun in the picture. If the sun is in the picture, if with a cheap camera, <coughs> I think impossible to take photos we can show. If it knows as uh, are possible, you stay here first one in, in, a, uh, in a city and must take this, okay, that is nothing. But uh, with the sun in the picture, which the cheap camera, I think, normally knows possible. I have a computer, but we don't have Bima. Uh, a picture with a cheap Canon Minus the picture. The projector is here. For what? With this picture, the I have to take a picture in Helsinki in midnight. I don't the know. Sunset. You were just talking that they had something to show. <laughs> I, I can take it. I don't think they have anything uh, to show. Because I am also have extremely slides. data of the camera. Never mind. I don't know. Anyway, it's quite good now. Uh, I have manual settings at the end of the scale of the camera. With automatic, it's impossible. Totally impossible with this camera also. Photograph against the sun. If you have the automatic, you have more, you have a great picture. Because the camera think it's better, no black, no white. I must do it in gray or in gray style colors. A sunset <coughs> is dark. No, it's not gray. It has more, much more black. Also, you must say to the camera, take, take less, take less light to take this picture. Basically, the, the camera only in automatic mode only sees the entirety of the picture, sees the, the, the main uh, brightness level and tries to get that somewhere in the middle, right? In, in manual mode, you can make a decision uh, which areas of the picture you want to you want to put an emphasis on, which areas of the picture you want to uh, you want to expose correctly. So you may want to crank up the exposure to lighten up stuff that's very dark in order to exposure, or push it down to have the colors of the sunset come out. The same uh, is if you take photos in the snow. The camera want to take gray photos, but the snow is white. Here you must also correct the data. Uh, as such cameras, also the cheap cameras, the telephone, I don't know. You have some programs. One program is automatic. It, it says P normally or a green icon. Automatic. Without that. Yeah. Automatic. Green. Yeah. Yes, it, it's possible. This is A also. Yes. The A also can be a half automatic. The S, please don't use. <laughs> uh, for this things uh, like a sun sunset or snow, you need the program N. And you must say the camera, don't take photos correctly. Manual. It's manual. In manual, you can set. You can set uh, the aperture and shutter speed. Shutter speed. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. why we will have. So there's an alternative that you may have. I mean, you may be completely out of luck, and and, and we'll we can we'll talk about this a little later. Uh, maybe your camera has an icon uh, that looks yes. like someone like this, yeah, plus minus exposure, exposure uh, correction, yeah. Uh, so this this allows you to uh, <coughs> just add a uh, add an offset to the automatically selected exposure. Yeah? So you have to crank it up or push it down. So so you can uh, deliberately under or over expose your are you uh, talking about the white balance or about the uh, white balance is a different brightness? Story. 
Yeah. White rice is good. Yeah. Okay. White rice is the temperature of the corn. Yes. <coughs> With the manual program, you can you can set temperature and shutter speed. This and this. What you need is the secondary. You see in the camera that the camera says, I want this. Uh, if you have a sunset, you go to here to take the, pho the photo data. In the snow, you go to here to take the photo data. Okay, so maybe you can explain lower aperture numbers mean wider aperture means more light gets into the camera. I'm not sure everybody knows this. Smaller numbers means uh, close the aperture, uh, let less light on the camera. And the uh, shutter speed, uh, so the uh, uh, bigger number, or the fractions. That's just a shorter, shorter time for which the shutter is open, so this, this uh, like gives less uh, light on the lens, uh, on the using the uh, longer the times. Uh, <laughs> so It's a camera, okay. 
but see it here, the lens in su such a camera are uh, eight millimeters. This is the lens, or oh, it's a good lens. <laughs> yeah. These are five centimeters. And this is expensive, it's greater. <laughs> and the very expensive are a half meter. And this is hmm? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I think it's possible to take with five millimeters the same the same pictures as with the spray, uh, I use the, the little, but it's, it is impossible. You can't take the same pictures with the cheap cameras. It is impossible, but you can take good pictures. Should we change to software? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 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 The flat mountain and the shutter, you really can make professional photos. Yes, just have, and then the problem is that you can't image it with single to make. You have to bring the film to the yes. Probably yeah. you learn more about photography. Yes, much more. Yes, yes. There is this thing, uh, a Kindle book, uh, taking manual photos in 20 steps or so. Uh, it's very, very good, also for me. There are new steps, uh, and this is the way to learn photography perfectly. This is this is the way, but it's a, a, a bit expensive. Expensive way. It, yes, a bit expensive, but this is expensive. No, you can part me level is like if you have this camera, yes. you don't learn such courses. Here you can take the full automatic, go on and take photos. The photos are good. With this? No. Here you must learn. Or with an old digital camera. Like five or eight years old. That's also. Such of the photographers between uh, ten years have a Nikon D15. Today you can buy it for fifty or hundred dollars without objective, without lens. This is the way. This is the better way as buy a cheap, a little, not no cheap, a little camera and the newest, the newest, the newest little camera and my photos not good, not here. Better person. Uh, to me, to, to be there. And fair, also, the need you can happen. take to destroy. That's <laughs> 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 a Russian camera. So <laughs> it's very good. And it's good. It's, uh, it's here. What works? It, it works. At minus 14 to plus 15. <laughs> Without problems. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. Yeah. Yeah. The world did not show some photos taken in this setting because it's really not professional. Yes. The problem is to, uh, to take films. It's not a problem, it just takes a really long time. So, yeah, but yeah, to buy films. I think developing might be expensive yes. nowadays because nobody... Not, not only expensive. Like Look at Berlin to uh, develop a film. Yeah. Yeah. But I think you can uh, digitize, digitize, develop and digitize film, film, for example. Should we, should yes. we stop yes. the discussion yeah. for the And uh, uh, so we, we, there's, there's uh, a ton of things we can talk about, uh, what you can do. Uh, while you're taking the picture, yeah, how, how you change the settings and how you walk around with your feet, right, and, uh, and how you wait for the right time, right? You mentioned sun, overcast skies are sometimes a good thing, right? Yes. Because you avoid the hard shadows and have a more homogeneous light, you know, a high dynamic range. Uh, so there's a ton of things you can do, but there's also some things you can do after you've taken the picture, um, processing-wise, and I think you want to talk about that. Uh, 
Oh, ISO. Okay. That's one thing. Uh, the electronic cameras has an ISO. ISO is the same as ISO. ISO. Uh, in the old cameras, you have a film. And the film has ISO. In the new cameras, you can change the ISO with every picture. It's much more, very much better. Uh, but why exists the ISO? With ISO 100, you have sharp pictures. ISO 800, you have some, some points. If you uh, go to 100%, you see points in your picture. Noise. Grainy. Noise. Noise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The old camera is grainy. Uh, today, noise. But with 800, you need less light. You must have a balance between the quality and the light. In this room here, you can't take the photo with 100 ISO because it is not enough light. So basically, you, you have your, your chip which you can fill with light in every pixel, right? You can put this, 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 this much light into your pixel. Uh, if you select a low ISO value, uh, then you'll get, you'll get the readout value from your pixel immediately as your image value. If you use a high ISO value, uh, then you say, let's make this 100%, yeah? And just use the, the bottom uh, the bottom part of my pixel light bin, so to say. So that means I don't need to expose uh, as as long as here to fill the entire bin, but I'll just take this and stretch it up uh, to get the new pixel. But since we have uh, quantified steps here, uh, the number of different steps in this lower part of the bin is much much fewer than the entire number of steps uh, in the, the entire uh, pixel, right? So this gives me not uh, such a smooth uh, picture. This creates uh, readout noise, right? So sometimes it's, it's random, uh, random differences whether the pixel is red as, as this level or as this level. And this gets this noise gets amplified a lot when you create, uh, when you select a high ISO number. And the ten steps uh, we are take here are here in this scale. So also here. Is one pixel like a, a little bit, a little, and here is greater. Uh, greater like the uh, light. So low ISO is sharp picture, and high yes. ISO is noise 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 picture. Picture. Not smooth, 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 mm -hmm. right, and uh, no noise. Mm -hmm. And high ISO is uh, noisy picture. Yeah. Yes. But why would you ever want to use high ISO? Obviously, if you have bad lighting conditions, if you don't have enough <coughs> light to take a picture. And then again, uh, uh, so this this means with uh, with a cheaper camera you have less flexibility, <coughs> right? In these conditions, uh, just be, it's fairly impossible to take a good quality handheld picture, right? If you have to resort to high ISO, you will get a noise picture. Is there some like uh, is there a bound between uh, at night ISO? I don't know. 2000 and <laughs> at daylight 100 well, and in a room. It's better to use a tripod and let the, let the ISO at 100. It's much more better. Yeah, much better. Much better. Also, with this camera. Uh, we can't say in the night uh, 3000. Oh, <laughs> then there you are. So, well, I mean, you, you really have to make some tough decisions. Um, sometimes if there's a shot that you, uh, that there's, there's a once in a lifetime chance, or, right, or if it's a really good opportunity, then you, you're gonna wanna have to do anything you can to take the shot, right? Uh, so then, then, well, you won't create a super high quality image then, but it's maybe better than no image at all, right? So, that's, yeah, that's tough to say. Um, I'm looking to buy a camera <coughs> which should be close to DSLR uh, quality, uh, so it's not my camera. But so I've been researching, yeah, I saw that um, a lot of uh, a lot of companies offer like twelve thousand eight hundred ISO. What's up with that? I mean, if if three thousand two hundred is bad enough, why go to like 
four times that. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah, it's, it's good marketing, right? Uh, so, <laughs> uh, for people who don't understand the number, right? So that there's, I mean, there's really a hard physical limit, right? If your sensor has a certain size, it can only capture this much light, right? And if you have an ISO 4800, well, some, some camera, camera manufacturers add um, denoising algorithms, uh, right? So when you look at an image, the noise isn't immediately obvious or as obvious as if you don't denoise it. But unfortunately, uh, the, it boils down to the fact that the information content that's necessary, or that, that would be in a, in a zero noise picture, it's just not there in the noisy picture, right? And no algorithm can, can make up for that. You can just gloss over uh, the noise a bit, but you will lose fine details in the image, for example, and it will look murky or like washed out very. The highest ISO at the film cameras, ca camera plus film, was 6,400, and I think it's a fun shot today also. Mm -hmm. uh, well. And this film, 6,400, was very, very great. And very expensive. Same so for the iPhone? It's the same. Yeah. Just for, the, for the full frame, yes. it's exactly the same. As the exactly the same. Uh, I, I, I only used for yeah, but I probably disagree with uh, the modern 5D Mark III uh, actually performs surprisingly good and much better than film. Um, mm. Yes, it's not, it's not, it's not better than no. the diaphragm. Oh, no. But this sensor is much smaller than the film, much smaller. Yeah, much smaller. That's what I want to know. That's also. How big is the sensor in the film camera? That's what I want to know. Yes. <coughs> That's, that's also a question. This, this, camera, this camera is the same size as this. Yes. And mine is a half of this and of this. So that is why I could take better pictures with this yes. camera than with mine. It's my PC. Just because of the center size. So, so yeah, it's yes. mm -hmm. And such of the little cameras has bigger chips than the other. If you buy a camera, look at the size of the chip. The ISO. <laughs> uh, Fuji film take high dynamic range in the camera. It takes two photos, one uh, overexposed. overexposed and one underexposed. And these pictures are better than the under than from the other cameras. It's double information. Yes. And then it combines with software in the camera. Actually, Sony doesn't do it. It's only if it no, da funktioniert it. Depends on the model, I guess. Mm. It's only uh, at Fuji film. I do have Fuji film, but no, not the Can I ER put it this here? Model. Because I'm going so. to turn it. Depends on the model. Yeah. 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 As the model of Fuji film, they do the system software. Sorry. It's so software. Good. One point in some photos for Wikipedia are photos <coughs> of buildings. And if you take the camera, now exactly perpendicular to the face of the building. <laughs> so, okay, and we're switching from uh, <coughs> to during taking the picture to, uh, to post processing uh, pictures. And first, First example is architecture uh, photography, right? And then you have perspective distortion. Normally, you have these photos in the field are brighter, wider, mm -hmm. wider than the base. Is that supposed to be building? Right? Or what are you drawing? Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's a building. Okay. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, for this problem, there exists a program who, who named uh, Shift. It exists in four languages, also in English. And this program uh, put the photos automatically from this situation to this. Full automatic. You put a photo in, three buttons, click, and there's a seal. I don't know. 
I am going to talk about Linux uh, on Linux program. Unix or Mac. Okay. Uh, it's no good to take this 100% in. It's better, and this can you uh, do in the setting of the program. Ninety-seven, ninety-eight percent. If you have it of two hundred percent, it looks like the building is on the top wider. It's better for the eye of the people to do this ninety-seven, ninety-eight percent. But this is a discussion in comments on Wikipedia <laughs> without end. <laughs> this assumes that your building is. Uh there's a building buildings in London now that have shapes like this. It's just building here. So, so that, that's, a, that's a valid point. So some, sometimes you can either find features in the building on the building that are rectilinear, or you have neighboring buildings that are rectilinear. So then you just take a wider frame and use that for correction and then drop off your cucumber or whatever. I think you should, you should say, uh, leave enough space on the side yeah. for, for this operation. That's right. Yes. Yeah, because you're going to lose the, you're going to lose space, right? If you have a building here that looks like this, mm -hmm. and you want to rectify this, you're going to cut out something that looks like this. So you're going to lose all this, right? So immediately your your crop will be will be tighter. And also, we have to say that this is not a religious uh, thing. It's, um, it's, it's you should decide that on a, on a case by case basis. Yeah, uh, it's often better to have straight buildings than just a little bit distorted buildings or a little bit crooked buildings because uh, that looks just like you you tried to but didn't succeed. Yeah, uh, but in some cases, dramatic angles. Uh, where you're really playing with the fact that your lines are converging are completely uh, uh, fine. So, another point you can correct is the noise. It's the noise of the picture. The noise is you have some pictures and uh, some pixels in the picture. And in this are uh, one red. So that's hot pixels. Hot, hot pixels. Or you have a greater distance between the pixels. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. And there is a software who can correct this influence. In, in limits. limits. In limits. In limits. So, the software need need image. They also exist for Unix and also in English. They do also full automatically denoise the picture. But you it's better to take it no fully automatic uh, because it's quite <laughs> yeah, uh, it will look like that. Was it that? Was it that? Yeah, when it's automatic, it makes the picture weaker. Yeah, so it's not so good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it will look like that. It will look blurred out and washed out. Washed out. You can the German expression involves licking it. <laughs> no, I'm not clear what this problem you're describing is. Is this, is this yeah. because of noise? It's noise, noise. yeah. It's noise. Do you do this uh, first when the photo comes out of the camera or after you corrected it and after you rectified it? First, you first. First. Okay. The noise is first. Uh, Otherwise, the characters of the noise may change uh, across the picture. And, uh, the last is sharpening. The last what do you do for the picture is chopping. So, 
Yeah, we, we have only five more minutes. So I, I wanted to um, talk about uh, an open source uh, program called Hagen, which is um, used to combine multiple images into um, uh, into one big image. So that, that can help you in, in several ways. So for example, if your camera only has a fixed focal length or only a, a certain wide angle uh, mode, if you have uh, uh, like an indoor situation where you want to take a real wide angle picture you screwed with your cheap camera but what you can do, you can take multiple pictures which are overlapping somewhat right, and uh, put that into this fully automatic program uh, and it'll uh, stitch them together without any seams uh, and give you a, a beautiful panoramic uh, picture so um, I, can, I can only yeah, I can only quickly talk about what you can what you can end up doing or, or uh, what the ends are uh, about the, the means. Maybe if, if somebody's interested, we can move to a different room, like 112, and, and talk a bit more in detail about how uh, and, and how to use it. So um, uh, this also gives you gives you the opportunity uh, to increase the resolution of the pictures if you have. Uh, like a, a beautiful castle that you want to take a picture of. Uh, yeah, so rather than just taking one picture with your cheap camera, you go ahead, zoom in, and take uh, three or four pictures uh, and merge them together. Uh, and then you can even scale them down a little bit again, and you'll have a perfectly uh, sharp and nice picture. Uh, so this, this gives you more pixels. Yeah, more information content, more pixel information content in your images uh, allows you to uh, uh, go to wider, effectively wider angles in your images. But there's uh, there's another thing which we uh, in the beginning talked about. That's the dynamic range or tonal range of the camera. This is the difference between really bright and really dark areas that the camera can, uh, can capture. So if you have the opportunity to change the exposure of your camera by either using a manual mode or the plus minus brightness uh, change, you can also take a stack of images uh, which are on top of each other, right? And those, those don't have to be perfectly on top of each other. You can do that handheld. Uh, and the software will completely automatically correctly align them, overlay them, uh, and create an image with a higher dynamic range out of that. And you can combine these techniques um, uh, in, in crazy ways. So you can put your camera on fully automatic, just fire away, uh, and the software will uh, correct for exposure differences, even white balance differences. It'll correct for uh, uh, lens errors, distortions, uh, uh, vignetting, so brightness uh, inconsistencies across the picture. Uh, and uh, will give you the possibility to output in a high dynamic range uh, picture at the end. So again, this is a very useful way uh, if you're willing to put in a little more work at the end to come up with great results even with a cheap camera. So yeah, I, I'd say uh, I'll, I'll be going to uh, room 112 or somewhere over there. If somebody's interested in uh, seeing I'm the program interested. and getting a quick introduction, then <coughs> they should also follow me. Foreign languages like English. <laughs>